This is an old story that was first in an ancient book of philosophy known as Lazy. And according to uh, some people, it was heard again um, being used by the Chinese leader Mao Zedong in a famous speech in 1945. It's about an old man who moved a mountain. In times long past, an old man named Gong, Yu Gong lived in the shade of two tall mountains. He was so old he had forgotten his actual age, but he lived a long and happy life. To his great delight he had six strong sons and seven sturdy daughters, an army of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and a wife who loved him, even though he had snored every night without fail for sixty years. Like many in his village, Yu Gong was a fisherman. He woke every morning in total darkness because the two mountains blocked the light from the rising sun. Along with the rest of the fishermen, he then trudged for an hour or so to get to his boat. The walk took so long that because everyone had to circle around the mountains to reach the sea. In the evening, laden down with fish, it took even longer. Over many years, Yu Gong had developed an immense dislike for those awkward mountains. They were a blot on his otherwise blessed existence, a daily irritation, a dark cloud in the sunny sky of his life. One evening, after yet another back-breaking march, Yu Gong suddenly realised that he couldn't take it any longer. Arriving home, he threw down his basket of fish in dramatic fashion. My family, come and listen, he shouted. I have something important to tell you. Many of his children and great-grandchildren lived in houses nearby, and they all gathered to hear what Grandfather had to say. Even the swarms of great-grandchildren sensed that something big was happening. They listened quietly, clutching their parents' hands. My family, I am not going fishing tomorrow, Yu Gong announced. I've had enough. Are you retiring at last? called his wife Lu Ha. It's about time, old man. Far from it virtuous wife said Yu Gong I have a new plan I intend to get rid of those pesky mountains you're gonna do what now husband Lu Ha sat down blinking in astonishment various daughters rushed over to attend to their mum wife I'm going to dig Yu Gong smoothed his beard which became ruffled in his excitement I have a vision I want to clear the way to the boats don't you see he pointed up at the mountains that loomed balefully over the village. If we shift these two hummocks, it will only take us a few minutes to stroll to the sea. Think of all the time we will save. What a fine idea, cried his children, who were just as sick of the mountains as their father. An excellent plan. When do we start? Eee, you've all gone mad, said Luha, hissing like a frustrated kettle. Look at you, husband. Your arms are as thin as birch twigs. You complain about your back every time I ask you to sweep the floor. You're so old, you can barely lift a pig. How are you going to move one mountain, let alone two? My family will help me, said Yu Gong. We'll start tomorrow. The family rose at dawn. Yu Gong attacked the mountain first, but anyone who could be spared from their usual jobs, joined the dig. Fathers, daughters, cousins, sons, even the tiny children helped out, carrying soil and roots away in baskets on their backs. After one day, the family had dug a small hole. After three days, it was certainly bigger, and after a week, it might have been described as deep, but neither Yu Gong nor his family were downhearted at this crawling progress. They continued to chip away day by day, steadily, slowly, their hole grew. Meanwhile, the two mountains towered above them, utterly indifferent to the tiny ants scratching away at their toes. Throughout their efforts, the other villagers mocked them. Now, this was a time when immortal spirits lived high upon the mountains. One of those spirits had laughed at the tiny people, beetling away at the foot of its mountain. But now it began to worry about what might happen to its home. Yu Gong is right, thought the spirit. If this family continues the work, then one day, as he predicts, they will demolish the mountain and I will lose my home. In great distress, the immortal spirit flew up to heaven and petitioned the Jade Emperor, the ruler of heaven, for an audience. 
There is an old man with an iron will digging up my mountain. His family have vowed to finish his task even if he dies. They are unstoppable. You have to do something. The Jade Emperor listened with interest to the spirit's story, sipping a soothing tea. It seems to me that this man is admirable, said the Jade Emperor thoughtfully. His family's sense of duty is without fault. They are hard-working and devoted. This family is worthy of the greatest respect. But my mountain, my lord, pleaded the distraught spirit, my mountain. The Jade Emperor considered the matter. He took two more sips of tea before nodding his head firmly. Good spirit, said the Jade Emperor. I've made my judgment. Let us see if there isn't something that can be done. The next morning, Yugong woke up early with bright sunshine streaming into his bedroom from outside. This had never happened before in his life. Shouting his wife awake, he ran ran across to the window. What he saw made him fall to his knees in astonishment. Ever since he was born, the two mountains that towered to the east of the village had blocked out the light of the morning sun. But this morning, they, they were nowhere to be seen. Overnight, someone had picked up the mountains and moved them. Yugong and the rest of his village now had a clear, uninterrupted view of the morning sun rising over the East China Sea. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life, said Yugong. He strolled out into the morning and down to the beach, just as he had predicted. It took no time at all. Yugong gave a deep, satisfied sigh. The glittering waves murmured on the pebbles, and a few seagulls bobbed on the water, snacking on shrimp. It was going to be a glorious day.